2012 Dallium medal winner is Ben Barber. The, uh, the, what's happened with Ben Barber, the drinking, the gambling, it's all now led to him being in rehabilitation. Hopefully um, the, the football gods are up there watching me again and can give me a bit, of, a bit more a bit of spark now to finish off the season. The three weeks ago, Ben Barber didn't have a club. It's not the first time Barber has been in controversy. Barber was also sacked by the Cronulla Sharks after he tested positive to cocaine. People were just informed me that I'm the, the second to, to win, uh, I guess, both awards in both hem hemispheres. I will hurt you! You want me, you want me to hurt you? The final chapter in the very sorry Ben Barber saga will begin to play out tomorrow. It's probably time for Ben Barber to find a new vacation. Rugby league is filled with many incredible stories of athletes who have risen to the top of their game and achieved fame, fortune and success beyond their wildest dreams. But just as often, these same athletes can come crashing down from their lofty heights, losing everything they worked so hard to achieve. And few have experienced this kind of rise and fall quite like disgraced rugby league star Ben Barber. Once considered one of the brightest talents in rugby league, Ben Barber had it all. He was a Dally M medal winner, a Super League man of steel, and had the rugby league world at his feet. But as quickly as he rose to the top, he fell from grace. In this documentary, we will explore the fascinating rise and fall of Ben Barber. Ben Barber was born in Darwin, Northern Territory, Australia, and is of Aboriginal, Afghan, and Torres Strait Islander descent. At a young age, he and his family moved to Mackay in Queensland, where he spent most of his junior rugby league days playing as a hooker for the Junior North Devils, Mackay State High School and St. Patrick's College alongside future NRL star Daly Cherry Evans. I started a little bit earlier um, at North Devils here in Mackay, um, about four or five, and then um, played for, for them all through till about uh, under 12s. And, and, and like I said, I played upper grade most all my life so got a bit, got to about under 12s and i thought oh look i'm gonna go down and drop back down to my proper grade and, and have a and sort of play for the play for my original my, my right age group so that was my first sort of trip to brothers i went to brothers bulldogs back then they were called so um, i think they're still they're still called that but um yeah went back and played um with i guess guys my age for for a year and then um yeah obviously Played in a lot of grand finals um, with the, with the team that I was, I was playing for prior to North North and thought I'd go help out this other side and then try and get to them one to them one to the, um, them into one and um, obviously yeah we got beaten by um, I'm not, not not too sure if it was Prossy or or Serena and they had um, obviously Daly playing for playing for them too so um, look yeah and then I from then um, I went back to North again from after that and then uh, continued. From a young age, Barber showed incredible talent on the football field. His father, Ken, even developed a unique whistle language to communicate with his sons, with different whistles for different things he wanted to convey. At the age of 15, Barber was discovered by legendary Brisbane talent scout Cyril Connell and received a scholarship to help with sporting costs and attend Broncos camps. Despite his talent, Barber had a reputation as a hothead and a hog on the field, which kept some scouts wary of him but he was a standout student in Mackay and showed immense passion for the game. However, his older brother Aaron had thrown away his own promising career, which made some teams reluctant to take a chance on the younger Barber. But Barber's talent on the field could not be denied, and soon he was on his way to becoming one of the brightest stars in rugby league. No, I see. Um, was was had a scholarship to the Bronx at a young age, from yep. um, I think uh, age thirteen to, to sixteen, seventeen, um, and that sort of sort of fell away. Um, and then, yeah, just oh, I still remember the day of driving with Aaron um, back home. A guy had moved back, and because he was with the Broncos as well. Yeah, yeah, he was there. And we were, we were, we were playing local footy together back home for for Mackay Brothers, and um, we, we got a phone call from a manager. Uh, um, asked me to come down and have a trial at the dogs and look at the time I just thought oh this is a great opportunity and yep. nothing was was I guess, set in stone I was just coming down here to have a go at, yep. at the dogs and hopefully um yeah get a contract and yeah it seemed to work out and uh, Ben Barber uh, North Devils um, Mackay mate um, it's up in the north of Queensland um, it's great weather great beaches and great people Oh, Barb's really just, just my 
name with a, with a Z on the end of it. So, um, yeah, uh, probably my mum. She's a very strong lady, and she's half the reason why I'm here today. So, she's probably her. Oh, work hard. Oh, Kobe Bryant, good basketball player. I like basketball. Oh, I would have to say Gemma, because he looks like Whoopi, Gold Whoopi Goldberg out of Sister Act. In 2007, Barber signed with the Canterbury Bulldogs at the age of 18. He started playing in the Jersey Flag competition and impressed with 130 points in just 11 games. The following year, Barber signed a contract extension with the Bulldogs until the end of the 2010 season. Although he played most of the season in the Toyota Cup under-20s competition, where he scored 26 tries in 27 games, despite playing halfback, 5 8 and centre, as well as spending some time on the bench early on, the Bulldogs coach Steve Folks believed that he was still too young for first grade. However, as the season progressed, the Bulldogs kept losing games, and the fans started to urge the coach to give Barber a chance in the first grade team. Barber made his NRL debut for Canterbury in round 20 against the St George Illawarra Dragons in the same week that Sonny Bill Williams left the club. They were heavily beaten by the Dragons 30-0 at ANZ Stadium. At the time he was called up to first grade, Barber was working at a car wash getting paid $13 an hour. Barber played three more games, but all resulted in losses. He scored his first ever first grade try in a 36-12 loss to the North Queensland Cowboys in round 22 at Suncorp Stadium. Space. What's the kid got? Turns Ashley Graham inside out. In 2009, Barber started the season in first grade under new coach Kevin Moore. In round three, he got into a drunken fight with his Canterbury teammates Jamal Idris and Lee Tamari at the Wentworthville pub car park. Idris punched Barber after he shoved Tamari against a wall. As a result, Barber was dropped to the New South Wales Cup and played for the Bankstown City Bulls until round 18, where he played a memorable match against the New Zealand Warriors at Mount Smart Stadium. Canterbury was down 14-12 with a couple of minutes to go, but they made a break and Barber received a pass from Ben Roberts before stepping and diving over for the winning try in Canterbury's 18-14 win. He eventually played the rest of the season in reserve grade and played in Canterbury's New South Wales Cup Grand Final Premiership 32, zero win over the Balmain Ride Eastwood Tigers, where he scored a hat-trick of tries. Barber finished the season with one try from four games. We're here at the show with Benny Barber, who's been coming off the bench for the Bulldogs. Mate, great to get some uh, consistent game time out there. Yeah, it is, mate. Um, it is, has been pretty enjoyable, and the more time I get, um, hopefully I get some more, and I'm going to embrace it with both hands, and... Love every minute I get to play with Brett Kamali and Andrew Ryan and them sort of likes. In 2010, Barber enjoyed a breakout season, establishing himself not only as a key player, but also a versatile one. He consistently produced tries, scoring 15 of them in 21 appearances, being Canterbury's standout player. Barber started the season as a regular first grade player. In round three against the Sydney Roosters, Barber came off the interchange bench and scored a hat-trick of tries in the Canterbury Club's 60-14 massacre win at ANZ Stadium, earning the X-Factor tag after his exciting performance in the match. In round five, Barber scored a sensational try when halftime was approaching in the Bulldogs' heartbreaking last-minute 30-24 loss to the New Zealand Warriors. However, Barber's discontent at being regularly confined to the bench or demoted to New South Wales Cup during the season was well known. But what few were aware of was how close he came to leaving Belmore. He did not formally request a release, but as the emerging talent's frustrations grew, his manager, Gavin Orr, put the question to then head coach Kevin Moore and his staff at the Bulldogs. Barber finished Canterbury's low-performing season with him playing in 21 matches and scoring 15 tries, being Canterbury's standout player. Entering the 2011 season, Ben Barber was already gaining recognition in the rugby league world. However, it was this year that truly propelled him to stardom. His journey began with his representative debut for the Indigenous All-Stars in the 2011 All-Stars match. Despite the team's 28-12 loss to the NRL All-Stars, Barber's performance stood out as he scored his first representative try. With the departure of Luke Patton, Barber was appointed as the Bulldogs' new fullback, a role he embraced with exceptional skill. He not only maintained his on-field brilliance, but also improved his consistency and reduced errors. 
In round six, Barber showcased his talent by scoring a hat-trick in Canterbury's 34-14 victory over the Parramatta Eels at ANZ Stadium. His second try in that match was particularly memorable, starting from his team's own half and concluding with a spectacular finish as he twisted the ball around to touch down just inside the in-goal area, narrowly avoiding being forced out of bounds by two Parramatta defenders. On the 20th of July, it was announced that Barber had signed a contract extension with the Canterbury club until the end of the 2015 season. It's Bay Wharf, the Bulldogs' annual SMS lunch with Ben Barber, who's just signed on the dotted line right through to 2015. Benny, are you excited? Yeah, uh, Roscoe, it's a pretty big uh, move uh, for my family and, and myself. Uh, it's, it's a club that's uh, treated me well since I've ever been here, and um, it's, uh, I guess I, I want to stay here and uh, I build a reputation at the club. An upgraded deal for next year and a new three-year deal. Uh, first, cl- first player to sign on the club until 2015. Uh, it's a it's a big move and one that you feel obviously is right for you at this stage of your career. Yeah, it's uh, uh, I've always wanted to be a leader at this club and and sign until 2015. Uh, we'll, we'll see me, uh, I guess, mature and, and get a bit older and obviously uh, become one of the older blokes in the team. So um. Yeah, it's, uh, again, I want to be a leader and to just sign till then, it's uh, something I want to do. In round 25, he played a pivotal role in the Bulldogs' 32-22 comeback win against the Newcastle Knights, scoring two tries, including a remarkable effort where he chased down a Jonathan Wright crossfield kick, placing the ball just millimetres from the dead ball line. In round 26, despite Canterbury narrowly missing a top eight spot, Barber ended the season on a high note by scoring four tries in a 36. 22 win against the Canberra Raiders, marking the last game for retiring Canterbury captain Andrew Ryan. Barber concluded the season with 24 matches and 23 tries, sharing the title of the season's top try scorer with South Sydney Rabbitohs winger Nathan Merritt. He also participated as an interchange player in the Prime Minister's 13 squad which played against Papua New Guinea at the end of the year. Barber began the year by playing for the NRL Indigenous All-Stars team in the 2012 All-Stars match, where the Indigenous team lost 36-28. Despite the loss, Barber earned a selection into the 25-man Queensland State of Origin squad, named as the 19th man for Game 2 of the 2012 series, though he did not play in any games. The 2012 NRL season saw Ben Barber firmly establish himself as a genuine marquee star. He finished as the competition's top try scorer with 22 tries and won the coveted Dally M medal awarded to the league's best player. However, the season ended in disappointment, with the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs losing in the grand final to the Melbourne Storm. In his first year as coach at the Bulldogs, Des Hassler transformed Barber into a player who, just six months earlier, seemed unlikely to overcome the too-small-can't-catch tag he had been labelled with. Hassler's revolutionary game plan, executed through a mobile, ball-playing forward pack, became the catalyst for one of the greatest individual seasons in rugby league history. However, there were warning signs that Barber's success on the field was not translating to a stable personal life. In the pre-season of 2012, during a bonding trip to Kiama, Barber got into an argument with teammate Josh Morris after players criticised him for prioritising the pokies over his teammates. Benny Barber, my number one. Benny Barber, numero uno. Of course it's Ben Barber. Wow. He can run from anywhere, Ben Barber. Here he goes. Barber's away. And the Bulldogs have got plenty there. He'll take on Ben. Oh, Barber. What a sensation. His second touch of the ball. He's run 100 metres. I just don't know what to say. Most improved player in the competition. This is what you call passing the examination with honours. His ability to create something out of absolutely nothing has turned countless games for the Dogs this year. Barber is back there. Thought about passing. He won't need to pass. Here's Ben Barber. All of a sudden only one to beat. And Zilman, he stands him up. And Zilman comes again. Morris now. He has got everything this kid. He has dazzling feet. Reynolds for the Magic Man. Benny Barber. He looks to stand. Now he runs. He produces a magic trick. He pulls out another one. Scintillating speed. Barber comes in from the back. Shoves one away. Gets inside enemy territory. Oh, he ran through the last line easily. And Barber's done it again. He's also amazing with his try assists. Ben Barber has a job to do here. Ben Barber off and running with support inside. Away from Cam Smith. Ben Barber 
kicks on his wrong foot towards Josh Morris. The try of the season, Lomain! There it is! The form he has provided this year has absolutely set the competition alight. Well, Benny Barber, what more can you say? Yeah, look, he's a freak. I think he's he's underestimated how strong he is for a little guy. He's, he's a very strong player. He's extremely fast. Just got great anticipation. For Barber to chase through. It's loose and Barber gets there. This is his catch. Not only does he score tries, but he's also good at the other end saving tries. Barber chasing. Pierce stepping. Barber wraps him up. And he might have stolen the ball. Benny, we love watching you play, mate. He is a little wizard, this fellow. This 2012 Dallium medal winner is Ben Barber. He took out five awards, top try scorer, fullback of the year, the moment of the year and the fans' choice. I, I still can't believe I've got it around my neck. Uh, there was a lot of great players in the running for this medal and, and for me to, I guess, be standing here now um, with it is uh, it's pretty special. And you didn't just win the Dally M, you won five awards tonight. How are you feeling? Yeah, I, I still can't believe it. I just said that once I get home tomorrow, I'm sure it'll, or tonight, it, it sure will, it will hit me that, that I've uh, won a few awards tonight. And, Look, it's, I'm, I'm very lucky for, for the people I've got, I've got in my life at the moment, in, in, in footy and, and in family. So look, it's, uh, it's, 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 I guess it's not a award just for me, it's, it's for them as well. Before Christmas 2012, things started to unravel for Ben Barber. He became associated with a Cronulla-based group known locally and online as EBC, the Epic Bender Crew, a tight-knit band of party-hard Gen Y mates who binged their way through most weekends. While a painful split with childhood sweetheart Ainsley Curry and problem gambling were other significant factors, excessive drinking and partying contributed significantly to Barbar's downfall. The face of rugby league in disgrace. A one-finger salute, a new tattoo, the common theme in both, the letters EBC. It's the Elite Bender Crew. Ben Barber, a key figure in a notorious gang that claims to party harder than anyone in the world. In December, Barber began partying hard with the Elite Bender Crew, a motley bunch that boasts online about its drinking prowess. The group includes former Bulldogs coach Steve Folk's son, Daniel, who also featured briefly on the failed TV show, The Shire. <laughs> Over summer, the stupidity escalated. Within a couple of weeks, the Bulldog star was texted to say he was officially part of the famous EBC, and Barber vowed to get a tat to back it all up. True to his word, a week later, he got the tattoo on his stomach. The photo straight on Facebook, with comments including, be interesting explaining that, on Channel 9. His wild partying and gambling continued. This was mid-January, in his EBC hat, middle finger raised. And again last weekend, he was showing off his EBC tattoo while out drinking with Manly's Daily Cherry Evans. At the start of 2013, Barber played for the NRL Indigenous All-Stars team, where he scored a first-half hat-trick of tries and was awarded the Preston Campbell Medal as the man of the match in the Indigenous team's 32, six win over the NRL All-Stars at Suncorp Stadium. Good evening. As the Bulldogs Rugby League Club tonight launches its season without Ben Barber, Seven News can reveal details of the superstar's plunge into despair. He'd been playing poker machines at pubs in Goulburn, winning thousands of dollars just hours before taking to the field on Saturday night. As Ben Barber's teammates prepared to train without him, they claimed to have had no idea he was in meltdown and breaching the code of conduct. I didn't have a clue to tell you the truth. It was, everyone was obviously a bit shocked. But Seven News can reveal at least four Bulldog players joined Barber on a betting binge before last weekend's trial match against the Raiders in Goulburn. It began Friday night at the Exchange Hotel. It's not known if he won or lost. By lunchtime Saturday, Barber was winning $400 at the Empire Hotel. Just two and a half hours before kickoff, back at the Exchange, he hit the jackpot, collecting at least $2,000. Things took a turn for the worse after a Friday night pre-season match against the Canberra Raiders in Goulburn. Barber joined his epic bender crew for a 36-hour drinking session. In the early hours of the following Sunday morning, CEO Todd Greenberg received a phone call from Curry, who was terrified that Barber was about to self-harm. Greenberg took him out of the team, 
stating that Baba was dealing with numerous issues and needed professional help. It later transpired that Baba was fighting alcohol and gambling addictions. Baba revealed in a 2022 interview that he had attempted to take his own life that day, but Curry had run in and tried to stop him from strangling himself. The incident sparked a series of controversies for Baba and the Bulldogs after Curry met with Greenberg and Hasler later that day. An NRL investigation by Tony Bannon reportedly found that Greenberg had noticed a mark on Curry's mouth and encouraged her to go to the police to the point where she felt bullied and harassed. Curry was treated by the club doctor before the Bulldogs arranged for her to be driven to Bankstown Police Station to make a statement. However, a third party reportedly persuaded her to reconsider, citing the impact it would have on Barber's career and income. The Bulldogs put Barber into a rehab clinic on Sydney's northern beaches and attempted to get him to play on through the controversy. When Ben Barber's demons were laid bare just over two weeks ago, Football seemed the furthest thing from his mind, but now it's the key to his cure. The advice from the experts is, and, and listen to these words carefully, it's counterproductive to continue to, to provide treatment in isolation from his football. However, his teammates and their families rebelled, turning on him over the domestic violence allegations and tearing the team apart. Barber later revealed that he had been engaging in a series of drinking sessions in 2012, where he would wake up without knowing where he was. The temptations outside of footy were out of this world, Barber said. I wasn't ready to deal with that. The women, the parties, the drugs, the alcohol, everyone wanted to be around Benny Barber. The fame got to me. I was just on such a high that the repercussions of what I was doing never even crossed my mind. Barber returned to play 17 matches for the Bulldogs before asking to be released from his contract to move to the Brisbane Broncos. However, during his return, his personal struggles continued and the press published a picture of Curry's battered and cut face, leading to accusations but no charges. Sandra, despite the NRL investigating allegations, Barber punched a woman. The fullback travelled with the team to Brisbane this afternoon. And as Matt Sulo reports, coach Des Hasler has backed the club's handling of the Barber situation. I think the investigation is around the process that the Bulldogs went through, so it's not around Ben, and, and at the end of the day, if he's fit, then you know he will, he will play. Obviously, the, uh, the alleged photo is, uh, is disturbing, um, but at the same stage, the club never and hasn't received any complaint or any plaintiff uh, in relation to that allegation. There's yeah. certainly no issue with Ben and any of the players. Yes. Uh, there's no issue at all. I, uh, I guess my long, my long term partner that I'd been with a while and, and had, had kids with, and um, obviously, um, I guess. There was another girl involved and all that yep. sort of stuff, and um, I guess being at, being at the top, it was sort of it's happened too fast, mm. and, and it's, it's something that at the time when I speak about now, I'm not I'm not proud of um, what what I did um, mm. back then. Um, I especially when you, when you, you hear me talk about how much I love my family, and, and mm. this was my my own my own family, my two my two beautiful daughters and my partner to to sort of do what I did was. Um, I, 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 I'm filthy on myself now for doing it, but um, look, uh, there was obviously the m few months there where uh, I'd, I'd be, I was, I was again uh, with with another girl, mm. um, and uh, in time I um, that s sort of didn't didn't start to work out, and I and I started I guess wake up to myself, um, yeah, um, that, that I needed them them in my life, my yeah. my, my, my children, and um, just uh, the. For us, I guess at the time, for me to to get back with them is was, I had to I guess get back with with me me partner that I had the kids with. Uh, okay, and, um, so you had to kind of sacrifice and move away from where all the damage, like all yeah, the bad things. Yeah, yeah, and, okay. Um, and um, to to do that, um, she said that she couldn't stay in Sydney, which is fair enough. She because yeah. um, I guess during all that time, they were my kids were always in the paper. Mm. Um, Tough, she 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 said she could hear people. She'd take them to the park and hear hear people whispering about it, saying they're the, they're the two young kids of the of the the, the bulldogs. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. to to be able to, I guess, my kids being picked out in the street um, is 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 um, I guess you don't want that on any, any yeah. kids. And these kids were only I guess four and two years old. Oh, so um, yeah. um, she she wanted she said for us if we were to ever to get back together yep. she, she well, I'd have to follow her back to Brisbane. But she, she her family was based there. Hey? Yeah, she's okay. she's oh she's she's from Mackay, but she's got a lot more yeah. family in Queensland. Yeah, uh, and um 
so um, the time came where I guess I, I went to the Bulldogs to ask if I if I could if I could follow them. Um, mm. And um, they, they, they um, Desi being the, the great man he, he is, uh, um, allowed me to. And um, yeah, it just all went on from then. We um, obviously moved to Brisbane. Um. Thank you for watching episode one of The Rise and Fall of Ben Barber, Unforgiven Glory. In episode two, we will continue his journey with his move to the Brisbane Broncos, his grand final win and subsequent sacking with the Sharks, his successful move overseas, and his ultimate downfall upon returning to Australia. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for episode 2.